All right, welcome to my first video. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, my prep lab here that I've set up and some of the tools. I know one thing that a lot of people who are just starting out in prepping always want to know about how other people uh, have their, their spaces set up, what kind of tools they use. So I thought I'd show you around my lab and uh, what I use. All right, so this is where I spend most of my time here on the workbench. Some of the first tools that you should learn on, they're the cheapest and uh, you'll always come back to them, uh, are your pin vices, brushes, and uh, I like scalpel blades, X-Acto knives. Uh, they can be good for removing uh, a little more bulky matrix than just than the pin vices are really good for getting down into detail. Uh, another thing that you're gonna you're gonna want is some kind of glues and stabilizers, uh, such as here on this uh, Myoplasis. It's extremely fragile. As soon as it's exposed, it will flake off very easily if it isn't consolidated. Uh, what I've been using on this is uh, Bootvar B76. Uh, it's uh, mixed in acetone and I've got it all ni nice and thin and watery so that way it spreads and penetrates easily. Uh, another thing, uh, cyanoacrylates uh, like Paleo Bond are really good. Uh, PBO2 is really good if you have broken bones that you need to stabilize before they're put back together. That stuff's really good. Another very important thing for any kind of fossil prep that you're going to be doing is you're going to need magnification and light and more magnification if you can get it. The more light, the more magnification, the better. Uh, I don't have a microscope yet. That is in my plans someday, but I don't have one yet. This, this is a really cheap headset. There's better ones out there, but even this cheap one uh, gets you going. Uh, I've been using this for a little while now and uh, haven't gotten around to upgrading yet. It's just because it works. Now the next step above pin vices uh, that you're probably going to want to get into is going to be your air scribes. This one is what well, this is one that gets used the most for me. It's a small one. It's really good for a uh, pretty small detail. If you need something bigger, more powerful, something like this works really well. If you need, if you've got a lot of matrix to remove, if you're not trying to get too close to the fossil, because if you get too close to it with this, you run a really great chance of damaging it. Uh, the smaller one, and there's even uh, air scribes that are way smaller and more refined than this. So this is kind of a medium uh, size one. And then I've also got Dremel. Dremels aren't really good for a lot of prep, but uh, for some things, especially if you're wanting to kind of sculpt the matrix around it, uh, that can be pretty good. It's kind of a limited use tool, but where it's where you do want it, uh, it comes in really handy. Now, also, once you get into uh, powered air tools, things start to get expensive and a little more complicated. If you're going to use air, you've got to have a good air compressor. Uh, this is a pretty cheap one. This is bare bones for about uh, what I'm doing. It, it wouldn't be able to handle too much more than uh, those scribes that I've got. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, a lot of people try and start out with those little bitty, uh, they call them hot dog compressors or pancake compress compressors that are used for running, uh, you know, like nail guns and stuff like that. They won't keep up. Uh, you need something with a good reservoir tank. 20 gallons is about minimum. Uh, and you need to look at your tools and what their air usage is. Because, and you'll need to match your compressor to that. Your compressor has to have uh, rest time. And the cheaper the compressor, the more rest time it needs. So if you try, if it tries to run constantly, it's going to burn up. Uh, if, you can, if you can have it cycle periodically while you're using it, which is where the reserve tank comes in, 
uh, then it's going to last you a long time. Now, I've already had to move my uh, my workspace around a little bit. So this was originally on the other wall. I had to move it and uh, plumb it up here across the ceiling because I did not start out with this. Uh, I love this monster, but it is huge, it is heavy, and it is a pain in the butt to move. But anyway, onto the air. So, airline comes in here, comes into a T, and you can see down here, got a drain. Water is your enemy. Uh, you don't want water going through your tools. You don't want, if you get into uh, media blasting, you absolutely got to keep that dry or it'll clump up and make a mess. So water drop out, comes across over here, added another water drop out down here, and then it comes across down here where everything else plugs into it. If you have a compressor that's oil lubricated, you need to have a uh, oil mist separator. And if you're running, especially if you're running a blaster, you really need a silica gel air dryer. Because if you have moisture going in, it's bad. Okay, that goes out in my distribution block, which then feeds over here into my tools. Now, compressors are loud. Very loud. You, If I could have had this anywhere else, I would have, but this is a space I got to work with. So, hearing protection. Cheap shooting earmuffs. These work good. This is a Bluetooth. I can listen to podcasts, music, whatever else I want to while I work. I like these a lot better. Uh, this gets a lot of use out here. Now, another good thing to have, anytime you're working, you're going to be creating dust. You, you either need to be wearing a respirator or you need a vacuum system to keep that dust under control. So right now I'm just using a cheap shop vac. Uh, I'm really surprised this one's still running. It, this was the cheapest thing that uh, Harbor Freight had. I think it was like five bucks after their coupon. I, I got it just to get me up and running and I planned on replacing it after it died, but eh, it's still running. One thing that will kill any kind of air system is your dust. You want a dust separator and this is what I'm using. This is a, a cyclone separator. What happens is your input comes in here. As it spins around, it drops down into your bucket down here. That gets like 99% of it. So you, this stays pretty clean before it goes into there. Now you can see here, I've had to do some fabrication to kind of create my system because I have one branch going over here to my workbench and the next uh, other branch goes off over here into my blast cabinet and then I've got, I've got gates on each one so I can, depending on which one I'm using, I can open or close them. And the last addition into my uh, prepping space here is, uh, this is my blast box. Uh, if you've seen others, typically people uh, will make their own out of some plywood, two by fours. They're not hard to make. Uh, I got this because just like uh, my shop vac, this was on sale. It was stupid cheap. I couldn't even build one for a uh, wood cost for what I bought this. So. This is what I got, and uh, it's not perfect, but it works pretty darn good. I haven't gotten around to replacing it yet, just 
because I like it so much. Lots of different uh, things you can use. This is what I found. This is made by Vanneman. Let's see if you can see that. I'm using just plain baking soda. I'm not using this one. This one's been out exposed. I've got to re-dry that. You can actually buy large volume bags of baking soda. And buying it that way is a lot cheaper than trying to go to the store and buying individual little boxes. Now, just like uh, your bench workspace, you need lights. Here we can go back in here. And... So I've modified this one and I have added spotlights into it. These are, uh, these are outdoor LED lights. They use very little power. They don't generate any heat. They're very durable and they'll put out a good amount of light. You can see I've got a stand in there so that I, my, because I usually work on small stuff. So that way it gets it closer up for me to see. I have a switch wired up so that when I flip the switch, it turns on the lights and kicks on the, uh, my air system. If you're using a, if you're going to be using a soda blaster, uh, any kind of blast box, any kind of media blasting, you need an air handling system of some kind. Uh, you could, you can create a system that's a lot better than I have, uh, but my system works. You're going to feel, if you don't have something like that, you're going to wind up filling your, your airspace full of dust. You won't be able to see very well. Everything gets coated in dust very quickly. If you have something like this here, that keeps the air flowing through. Keeps it clean. And uh, so that way you can work as long as, as long as you need to. So that's a look at my workspace. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer.